Relatable Experience Podcast. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Illimitable Experience Podcast. If you are watching this video, like this video and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do subscribe to the channel. We are posting great content regularly every weekend. Today we have as our guest my friend Arushi who I have known since my law college. Hi Arushi, how are you? Hi, hi, how are you? Great, great. I am doing great and um, yeah. So how, what have you been up to lately? Nothing much. Job, but yeah, yeah. There's nothing else in the corporate life. Job, <laughs> so, yeah. The same, yeah, the same. Well, I understand. So, Arushi, uh, today we have gathered to talk about this book, which uh, we have read and we, which we wanted to discuss since uh, the month of September. The <laughs> book is called The Animal Farm by George Orwell. And um, yeah, so how did you come across this book when you before you read the book for the first time? So how I came across. So I was <clears throat> on a reading high at time pe. So you know, you every time you have phases, you oh, now this is my reading phase. I'll I'll read. I'll. So pehle I used to have these phases, but it used to last for like a book, two books. But then uske baad se, in the second wave, after the second wave, I be- became really interested in uh, reading. And so then I used to follow a lot of booktubers, if you will. And so uh, one of them recommended uh, this thing, Animal Farm. And I was like, okay, I'll read it. And when I read it, I was like, that is great. And I think you also, I think, posted something on Instagram to recommend books and something. And Udhar, I told you to read this book. Yes. It's great. Somebody yes, has sir. taken my recommendation for once. <laughs> Yeah, so that is how I also uh, got aware, I mean, I became aware of this book, uh, just like you said, it was only in the pandemic that I posted for book and recommendation and it was, I guess, it is the same time when you just completed reading the book and uh, you had had given me this suggestion because uh, before I posted uh, the recommendation for my book on my Insta, uh, mm-hmm. It was, uh, I had seen your story as well, Kya Chha, isne ye book complete kiya hai. so I was kind of hoping that you would also suggest books. So that is how I came to across this book and uh, second, it took me a while to start reading this book because I was already reading a few books and I had a few books in my mind before I start reading it. But uh, it is the September of 2021 when I started reading this book and uh, that is how... Uh, I completed reading the book and man, that book is, is really something and it makes you question a lot of uh, things that have been, that are going around and that have continued and that will continue to be around. So we'll, we'll be, we'll be having, we'll be discussing this book today and we'll be giving our own inputs and let's see where this goes. Uh, so first, let's just get uh, be aware of what the book is and when was it written and, uh, you know, what was the purpose mm-hmm. of the book. Yeah. So, uh, Dave, can you share s- slide one? Yeah, there you go. So... <clears throat> Uh, the Animal Farm is a book. Yeah, it is written by George Orwell, which was written mm-hmm. in 1984, and uh, it was written during the. Fa- it was written when he was uh, describing the situation of Russia and how did uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. socialism get into power. The next slide. It is mentioned over here that the usual story is that or- uh, George Orwell wanted to tell the people of the world that communism sounds really good in theory. But that, Mm -hmm. in practice, it always returns to the system it was before. Uh, Arushi, what what is your thing on socialism as a form of government? Because we have always seen that socialism has always failed. And uh, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, people always say that the real socialism hasn't been put to practice yet. So what is your take on this? A person who has seen the Russia grow... Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, get become as a communist state and then also see its fall down. Yeah. So first, though, I'll just tell that this book is, you know, based on the Russian Revolution. The author has written this book to kind of represent the Russian Revolution in a in a satirical format. 
and um, so uh, when i was reading this book i yeah it is i think it is pretty evident that um it is one thing to criticize something um as a form in the sense that the kasa kind of government that was there before if we put like parallelly to the book the, that uh, format but later on i think it does not work and i also think it fails and with the absolute zero knowledge of <laughs> social i mean not zero knowledge of but i have a little bit of idea about socialism because i came to know about this through this book and then i read a little bit of it and i also think that it is difficult to kind of reinstate all the time that everything will be equal amongst everybody no matter how hard or how uh, you know how hard one is working or how not hard one is working <laughs> so mm. yeah so it is a little difficult and i think it at after a point of time it also becomes a little unfair according to me but what do you think about it see uh the the concept i mean this as far as i have read it tells that uh, there there has to be an equal equal equality of outcome yeah and if that is the case that socialism promotes then it is going it's it is definitely going to hinder the efficiency of the people who are smarter at yeah. some things than other people because if i have the efficiency to give like a uh, 100 products in say like a day and if somebody else has the uh, efficiency to give only 60 or 70 products a day then i should definitely have more benefits and i should be paid yeah. more in the place but if you say that acha 60 ka 60 karna hai to for a person like me who has the efficiency to produce 100 products i will not, i won't work as hard as yeah. other people right because for me it is just operating for 60% of my efficiency yeah uh they can you move next yeah so this is like the uh i would say uh introduction to the book uh mm-hmm. the the narration i mean the story has been written in a farm named manor farm and which is not doing well under the leadership of the farmer known as uh, called jones yeah. and um, this this can be written i mean this can be written in a way that the russian empire was doing well in the early 1900s but uh, mm-hmm. later uh, under the rule of tsar nicholas ii who was seen as incompetent and that is when people started to see acha the leadership is not as uh, productive as it should be so mm-hmm. we can i mean make a comparison that the farm is the metaphor for russia and the incompetent uh, farmer jones is none other than tsar nicholas ii this is where it gets interesting <clears throat> because the because the way jo- uh, george orwell has uh, made written this book it is called uh, se- political satire and he mm-hmm. hasn't mentioned any names per se but he has yeah. taken the representation of each section of uh, the crowd as animals what is what what do you think of the representation that uh, george orwell has made here i think uh, the representation is pretty accurate and um, it is also made in a way which is very evident so anybody who is well aware uh, about, about the russian revolution or is well versed with the facts of the russian revolution the people who were involved will get to know who exactly are they talking about when they come to know when to come they, when they come to read the book animal farm so right. i think it is also done in a very evident way to put the message uh, across very clearly right so there is this hog or a pig who is the oldest and the wisest of the animals he called the meeting i mean so this this uh, if you can see it was the pigs who started the revolution against uh, yeah. the farmer jones and <clears throat> uh, they can you move to the next slide that and uh, it started with a motive that all the humans are there to just oppress and uh, oppress the animals and the animals aren't being taken care of mm-hmm. and uh, <clears throat> like if we also see the kind of way how the rebellion actually starts in the book 
it is because of the hunger i mean it is because one day the the manager of the farm mr jones he is unable to he does not feed the animals and uh, he kind of gets drunk one day and sort of ignores all of his duties that he has to do in the farm that is to milk the cow or to cut the grass or whatever and he mm. forgets to feed the animals which which when then leads to the rebellion after the uh, old pigs um the speech I, mm -hmm. that and I, that also i read is very similar to the way how the russian revolution initiated it was also because of hunger because the russian government was uh, kind of funding the world war uh, and they were not very focused on like starving deaths that were caused because of starvation because their own population was being starved because of the lack of funds lack of food uh, and the government's whole concentration was to fund the world war so in that case it is very like um, similar to how the rebellion starts in both the places mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. meanwhile as dev pulls up the book uh, i have the bear book in pdf format and we'll be going through the book as well uh this has been the classic story of a rise of every tyrant i would say or every dictator that has ever risen to power that uh, people were uh, disappointed and had lost faith in the government in the existing government and that is when the a uh, person who rose from the ranks on the military suddenly rises up he starts giving up speeches and he gains a lot of fame because he is a charismatic leader and uh, he has he speaks for the unspoken right it, it that is how dictate all the dictators have risen to power if you look at hitler also it was only when germany was suffering that he started to give out the speeches saying that okay the existing government hasn't done anything for us okay they haven't we stood up to the expectations as Uh, you know for which they were elected and uh, he was constantly pointing at the underlying uh, uh sense of people that uh, that they are not being led correctly and when this is how he rose to power right and this is the thing about uh, people if you look at uh, people who are people who are great orators right they always point out at things that people want to say okay but they are afraid to say because oh yeah. okay what will be the consequences of it be it a good dictator or be it any online uh, you know platform there are you know like coaches the life life yeah. lifestyle coaches or uh, uh, the famous personalities that have risen to power on youtube as well so everyone has this common thing that they have always spoken of those things that people are afraid to speak of if you uh look at jordan peterson as well okay obviously the way the way he i'm not telling he's a dictator but the reason the the reason for his rise has been that okay there are men who are suffering primarily in some way men don't have a place to talk to why they are suffering what is the solution to that and when he started speaking people started to look up to him okay there is someone who is voicing our you know predicaments as well and that is when the whole you know expansion started okay now jordan peterson is famous and everything like that and uh, that has been the classic example of how uh, you know charisma is something that every dictator or every great leader has had yeah also this book is a very text line um a very textbook example of absolute power corrupts absolutely because this book is kind of like just illuminate that very in a very like great way i feel mm, yes now we'll have a look at the book when we'll go through the pages to uh, to see how how the built up has started and what happened and what events took place that led to this and how did it end yeah yeah yes so the first chapter uh yeah so uh, arushi how how does this how does the book start now that you have read the book recently as well i want you to tell me how does the book start first and uh, right. give a gist of chapters yeah i i'll look at my book here because oh sure. ah, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah sure sure <laughs> so the book basically starts it is starts in a setup of a 
of a farm. Uh, the name of the farm is the Manor Farm. And uh, the farm is managed by Mr. Jones. Uh, so in his farm, he has like many um, animals that he has kept for poultry, like to sell or some to send to the butcher house, all of that. And so one day what happens is the, there are, there's this old pig who is called the old major in mm. the book. So he has um, a dream and he, stay, uh, he wants to tell every animal the dream that he's seen. And so he, the word kind of spreads quickly and all of the animal decides that, okay, once uh, Mr. Jones is out of the way or, and, or he goes to his house and is not keeping a look on us, we, what we'll do is what we'll do, we'll like set up a meeting and we'll discuss the dream. Mm -hmm. So in the one, when you start reading about the dream uh, and the kind of way uh, he speaks, he starts to uh, tell about the people. It is very much in a way of how you told uh, a very charismatic uh, speaker orator. He tells, he also speaks in a way where it, you know, hits the people right where it has to. And, you know, it like kind of, um, what do you say? Matlab uska jo intention hai, it just goes, to, gets to the people. The people get the feeling of, okay, this mm -hmm. is, this is a problem we are actually facing. So in the, uh, in this, when he starts the speech, old major, he starts with his speech by telling that all men are the root cause of our problem. And it Sorry. is men that is, you know, they don't do any work. The men are, do not like have to labor like us. But at the end of the day, they get to reap all the benefits of uh, our acts, our labor. But and then we get nothing. All we, have, we are left with is minimum food and uh, some water and milk, whatever. And that is barely for our survival and not something that we can, you know, we have for our own leisure, for our own enjoyment. So okay. it basically goes like, it. he basically says that um, the, man, the underlying idea of his whole speech is that man is the, our real enemy and that we must kind of, uh, you know, get rid of men in order mm. to uh, sustain ourselves or in order to have like a flourishing uh, this thing Life farm plan. in this context mm. Uh, mm. The, where we have enough food enough water enough everything for every animal we should get rid of men and so he tells them of their dreams and then that is how the whole their speech goes on for the night and then they kind of uh, have in at the end of the day uh, at the end of the speech they do have like a song that kind of combines them all together which in this book is called the song um, the beasts of England, which Correct. kind of com which kind of which lays down, you know, the foundation of their new uprising in this um, revolution. Let's say in this, it is called the animalism. So this song becomes their uh, the binding factor to that. And yeah, mm. that is all how it starts in the first uh, first chapter. Like, yeah, first right. chapter. And as I've said before. Uh, the main cause of why this um, rebellion later on like takes um, stage, like takes up, um, you know, it, it starts basically is because of hunger. When the um, Mr. When Mr. Jones forgets to feed the animals, but that mm -hmm. yeah, that is uh, the later part of it. This is how it generally the idea just comes into being. Comes into being, right, yeah. right, right. So you summed up the, the you summed up the first chapter very uh, accurately. And uh, uh, there are there is one line that really hit me hard, and uh, that was uh, that was and I have highlighted as well. Dev, can you point out the line that? So here is the thing. Okay, I uh, while reading this book, I was also watching a documentary of uh, how to become a tyrant on Netflix. Oh. Okay, so the 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 the. the the documentary was about the dictators like uh, Hitler, uh, Libya's Muammar Gaddafi, and uh, the dictator in Uganda, and how did they rise to power? So, it is a very common thing the, that dictator to be, all the dictators had in common that they had to shift the blame to to someone else, right? Yeah. They had to yeah. have a scapegoat that uh, would really make the people believe that okay the reason of our suffering is not because of 
our lack of uh, you know a contribution to the society but it is the it is this one ex person so it was clear that when it was when it was uh, germany the enemy that was the scapegoat was the jews in uh, if you look at uh, uganda uh, the enemy that was and uh, the 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 people that were uh, scapegoated were the indians because when in uganda there were a lot of uh, you know indians to uh, indians who were doing business there and uh, the dictator over there felt that the ugandan people are upset and disappointed because uh, they aren't given the necessary pay that they have they, they should be given and it is the indians the merchant class of you know indians that were there uh, that are taking away all the wealth from uganda so that's a clear and this is what you can see over here that in the case of animals it was easy and convenient to point out that i mean the scapegoat was mr jones who who did not feed them for a day or something like that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and so later this is on what... also like we see in the book that even to maintain their own you know leadership they have to find then another scapegoat within their, themselves just to maintain mm. that position of it, power exactly so it's it's simple that whatever the dictator is doing or uh, you know the the leader is doing is always for the right is always for the benefit of the crowd but it is always this one enemy that yeah. has to be used as a scapegoat to shift the blame ki usko uske liye rakha hi hai ki kuch bhi hua to uske hum blame dal denge mere mein kami nahi hai wo uski wajah se sab problem ho raha hai yeah so uh yeah we can uh, they uh, scroll the next so here as you know this is what a, a, a shadow of doubt was casted by one of the um by one of the animals yeah mm -hmm. one of the animals that uh, it is i mean obviously people have their own ability to think as well so this is where the you know a kind of balance has been shown that's and uh, someone amongst the animals as well was aware that uh, that uh, humans totally aren't responsible it because it is not crystal clear that all mm -hmm. of our suffering i mean the animal suffering is because of the humans only and but to that the 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 response was what was expected that you get rid of the man and the suffering of ours will be over so yeah yeah the next this is i guess this is the song of uh, yeah. the uh, uh, beast of england the beast yeah, of yeah. england beast of ireland beast of every land and clan and clime hearken to my joyful tidings of the golden future time soon or late the day is coming tyrant man shall be overthrown yes of course and the fruitful fields of england shall be trod by beast alone the rings shall vanish from our noses okay and the hardness from our back bit and spur shall rust forever cruel whips no more shall crack riches more than mind can picture wheat and barley oats and hay clover beans and mangal versels shall be ours upon that day so this is again this is um, you know when i'm while reading i i could sense that uh, so what is trying to do over here that um, the old major is that he is not only summoning the animals of the manor farm okay he is also trying to summon all the animals from other farms as well Everything. okay yeah. because he is not only sticking to beast of england he is also going to the beast of ireland yeah. and they want to do the they want to create and this is another sign of rebellion that when people are being summoned you know against once against one enemy it is the rebel is for uh what should i say is is for you can expect that something is something is we can you know expect something will happen uh you know that we haven't seen before something of a chaotic nature bright will be the shine of england purer shall its waters be sweeter yet shall blow its breeze on the day thus that sets us on the day that sets us free okay next at the same time you know as you, as you notice arushi if you noticed um 
while not only he is summoning people from other countries and other farms as well, he is also trying to give a very utopian, uh, you mm -hmm. know, Point society yeah. Yeah. that if if humans are eradicated, then these are the benefits that we'll be showing as as we can see in the poem or uh, the song. Okay, next. Now we are on the chapter two. Yes. Yeah. So what what is the what does the chapter two say? All right. So the chapter two first starts with saying that after giving of the speech, uh, the old major dies. Um, hmm. Three nights later, after giving the speech, the old major dies, and then his body is buried. And then this chapter kind of goes on how to um, how Mr. Jones forgets to feed the animals one day because he drinks a lot that particular day and he neglects his duties and all of the all, and all of the people that he has um, you know kept to work on his behalf they also kind of do not feed the uh, animals they just very casually forget or do not feed them and mm. then uh, the animals are literally dying of hunger and so they break into this shed food shed where when uh, the Mr. When Mr. Jones wakes up from his sleep, he just sees that oh, all the animals have broken into the food shed, and then he, with his whips and gun, he, he just goes to the farm with his people to kind of you know put the animals back to their places. But this time, what happens is that the animals first time they discover the power of their power, the power that they have within themselves, and that they can you know drive away. The people if they do not want them to be there and so the animals kind of drive away the mr jones and his people and this is then this is the part in the book where they like the first time they are now there are they are on their own and they mm. have nobody ruling them and they have achieved what they wanted to achieve which is to drive the humans away or not to have a human control or a man controlling them and now they have to kind of themselves decide uh, you know, who is going to rule, how is the farm going to run, everything is on them, on their own. They have to do everything on their own. Mm. And so this is the rise of the rebellion. In this chapter, this basically shows the rise of the rebellion. And later mm. on, what ha uh, so uh, the pigs in the farms are considered to be the most intelligible, intelligent animals. And so um, uh, what happens is they decide that, okay, the pigs will rule us right now. And uh, the pigs, they make uh, seven commandments in uh, to kind of guide and to, you know, set a, to kind of set an idea. Okay? This is, okay, this is now what we all will follow and this is our core uh, like principles, if you will. Mm -hmm. So, the seven commandments which they set for themselves um, goes like, whatever goes upon two legs is an enemy, which, mm -hmm. which you know, is referring to a man then there man. is another thing the second commandment which goes at whatever goes upon four legs or has wings is the friend because they had some sort of confusion about birds be, um, before like previously in the chapters because birds are two legs but they say okay the wing if it has a wing or if it has wings it, it, it he is a friend mm. then it, it goes to say that the third commandment says that no animal shall wear clothes the fourth one says, no animal shall sleep in a bed. Then fifth one says, uh, no animal shall drink alcohol. The sixth says, no animal shall kill any other animal. And the seventh says, all animals are equal. And this is very important uh, in the chapter because later on we see how this, this is just very conveniently changed for the, you know, for keeping, uh, for keeping one person in the position of power. And nice. yeah. This is the basically this is the second chapter summary of the second chapter. Right. So yeah, that uh, you sum you summarize it. You rightly summarize it. A person to rise to power, okay, and to uh, uh, in in business we call it how to scale it ahead, right? Yeah. So uh, if you look at uh, this the the events that took place, so the old major had successfully caused the you know, uplifting of the spirits of the animals that achha, we are being, we are not being treated rightly yeah. and uh, we have to do something about it. 
and when you come to this chapter obviously we saw in the in the song as well that he wanted all the animals to come together from the other farms as well so how do you scale that right we cannot a, a leader cannot personally go to different places to pre, to you know spread his preachings so what happens is in such a case when when the lead, when the leader has to scale his own you know aura around people what he does what they do is um, they come up with a tagline okay to make to make it simpler for you, for everyone to follow and which is also relatable and which also sums up his ideology so this is what happens okay if if you look at any election as well be it in a democratic country or be it in a, in a which is not a democratic country there are always slogans right ke yeah kisi ka tha ki uh, what was the the one what congress was ke uh, congress ka haath aam aadmi ke sath mm-hmm. you get you get the a a client mein they just gave their <coughs> ideology ke acha yeah, we yeah. are with the common people when it was bjp it was uh, acche din aane wale hai Mm-hmm. right so no over here either. as well yeah so it's you see the relatability but for the animals yeah, yeah, yeah. it became ke acha how do we spread our ideology it is simple the characteristic of an animal is four legs okay or wings so hum unko include include kar denge so it became like uh, uh four legs good and two legs bad yeah and who are on two legs yeah. only the humans so mm-hmm. this is how they spread their own ideology to other farms as well acha ki agar jo char pair wale hai hum to hum acche hai aur jo pair mm-hmm. do pair wale hai wo bure hai without even thinking so it it it's really you know sprinkled to the to the grassroots level of all the animals that were around the farm and in other countries as well and it is very and it is weirdly strange as well that the of all the animals the pig was uh considered to be the smartest to mm-hmm. leave the uh, pack i mean we have we, we do know that pigs kya karte hain they just mm-hmm. roll in their own shit and eat their own shit but that uh, is what they have done in the book <laughs> to be very honest that is what they have done <laughs> oh my god so it's it's weird that summer who is considered an animal which is considered to be you know ke okay, acha uh, animal who eats and you know bathes in its own shit is considered to be the best and the smartest mm-hmm. which is like again alarming ke acha ye kya ho raha hai karke ha ha yeah so again the and this is repeat the seven commandments that whatever goes upon two legs is an enemy again the spread of ideology whatever mm-hmm. goes upon four legs or has wings is a friend no animal shall wear clothes which is which animals do no animals shall sleep in a bed which humans do so wo we cancel no animals shall drink alcohol which is again humans do no animals shall kill any other animal okay which animals do that but it's okay all animals are equal yeah even even in this uh, if you notice ke uh, uh, to make our own crowd you know uh, make them feel familiar okay if i if let's say an leader wants to make his followers familiar so there has to be those common traits that makes them feel familiar right so if you look at someone like hitler his his um, sense of familiarity came from that the that the germans or the indo aryan if i'm not wrong they are a more superior race Mm-hmm. so you know this is what we can see ke acha we don't do these things so we are more superior than the jews in case of hitler and over here in case of animals yeah also these I mean, seven humans. commandments i feel is very much based on the person that they made their scapegoat which is mr jones because then he would you know drink alcohol and he would send animals to the butcher house to kill and so that is why i think they came up with these commandments to very particularly because it is based on everything that mr jones does and they said they said that they won't be to doing correct correct right there you yes correctly pointed out that so kind of also you know to place themselves at a superior level as a superior then, yeah correct yeah so now in the third chapter uh, what yeah. happens is all the animals they kind of um, decide that which animal is going to do what so the pigs kind of take over so now 
uh, there are two main characters in this uh, in in the leadership which is napoleon and snowball both of them are like kind of in the leadership position but they always have conflicting opinions and they never agree on anything so which then you know later on as we said before they have to make a scapegoat within themselves and so this is very important to note that you know though these two uh, pigs they never agree on anything and then there is another pig by the name of um, what is squealer and Squeeler. that pig is the very like imagery of how you know propaganda are spread or people who you know are participating or the people who participate in spread of, of a propaganda that is how he the his character is built and so basically what happens is that everyone now just like according to their capacity they start working and um, yeah basically uh, they start working and they see that okay now this is mm. we we are getting good returns of our labor and we have enough food for everybody and we have uh, enough like water and everything for the animals and so this is good and the pigs also take their position as the leader and to establish that position they also kind of I mean, creates committees they make an animal committee they make a re-education committee and there is also emphasis placed on the education of people but yeah but they also realize very quickly that not everyone wants to be you know so educated <laughs> not educated in the sense that not everyone is you know at the same level to imbibe that knowledge and so Correct. there are sheep who are you know uh, kind of made to feel like oh they do not get anything like you teach them mm -hmm. anything they do not even learn, cannot even learn the seven commandments that the way that is the very ideology of their revolution and so they for the sheep they just further simplify the uh, this thing the commandments by saying what you said before four legs good two legs bad so this is I think this is it for the third chapter where they basically now just are realizing that okay we mm. have power we can you know we uh, the the leadership also is set up in this chapter and so yeah this is basically what is right right. Right. So yeah, you correctly said that uh, the third chapter is the foundation is lays the foundation of uh, uh, the pigs as the leaders of the animal clan. And uh, as you can see, the snowball and Napoleon were two two leaders that were uh, reckoned to be the you know, that, that were reckoned to be the leaders. But again, they had their own disagreements here. So um, over here again uh, for a as, again, I would like to bring out same thing also from uh, the documentary that I watched. That is the rise of the tyrant. You know how to become a tyrant. Mm -hmm. um, it was again common amongst all the dictators that rose to power that uh, with while rising to the power, they had that I would say comrades or compatriots together. You know. And uh, because th those were the people that shared the same ideology and those were the people that wanted to rise to power and rule upon people. And uh, okay, spoiler alert, I would like to give that in the in the next few chapters, uh, Napoleon, no, is Snowball. Snowball is the one that leaves the farm, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Snowball is the one that leaves the farm. Again, that is representative of uh, uh, the similar trait that once the original dictator has risen to power like in case of russia it was stalin in case of uh, the germans it was uh, uh, the, the hitler in uh, uganda it was I, I can't recall the name uh, so what they do is once they have risen to power okay they kill all their compatriots or comrades that they were that they were with that has been the trait among all the trait among all the dictators that you know once they have reached the, the desired position they eliminate all because they don't want to share the power with their own people you know with their own fellow mates who rose to power with them it is just only they themselves want the entire control of the entire country and that is kind of a huge huge red flag that mm -hmm. uh, we see but yeah. here the flag was green yeah the, yeah, the year the flag was green. Snowball explained. <laughs> yeah. 
to represent the green fields of England while the hoof and horn signified the future republic of animals which would rise when the when the human race had finally overthrown. Again, this is a branding, I would say. In, I mean, uh, branding, I would say that we can see over here because every uh, every leader or every ruling party have their own way to represent themselves, right? And this is how the animals wanted to be perceived by people. I mean, perceived by other animals and people as well that uh, if you see this flag, the green flag with horns and hoofs, then it is the place which is being ruled by animals. Hmm. A representative of the Republic of the Animals. Yeah, Republic of the Animals. Great way to put it. There, there are so many alphabets. This is basically where the education is happening, where yeah. the importance of education is also kind of brought into mm -hmm. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, that, that, is, that is again a trait of a, uh, of a person who wants con absolute control. Uh, that they make the education in a way that promotes an old ideology rather than on rather than a truth seeking ideology mm -hmm. if you look at um, north korea okay the leader kim jong un the they people are you know made or you know they are trained to look up to him as a, and you know admire him and put put him on a pedestal and uh, you know to to just have that godly feeling you know ke agar kim jong un dikha to he is your god nobody mm -hmm. else can you know uh, tell you whereas the purpose of education is to able is to be able to differentiate between truth and false and always strive to seek the truth that is the purpose of education but again as you can see yahan pe education mein bhi un log ne apna ideology dal diya tha so that the ideology you know rubs off on the younger generation or uh, other animals as well and again you see that after much thought snowball declared that the seven commandments could in effect be reduced to a single maxim four legs good two legs bad this he said contained the essential principle of animalism that we already discussed that uh, for uh, the ideology to go to seep into the at a grassroots level uh, it has to be simplified because the more simplified it is the more you know people will get attracted to it and mm. it has i mean i wouldn't call this dictatorial or a red flag because <clears throat> even today we see every brand every uh, you know cap every i would say party has their own um what should i say a low, uh, uh, a line that kinds of makes you to associate ke acha agar ye na line suna to this is the brand Again, this is uh, Arushi. Again, if you see that the early apples were now ripening, and the grass of the orchard was littered with windfalls, and the animal had a summer had assumed as a matter of course that these would share. This would this would be shared out equally. Okay, shared out equally. Yes. So again, this one one event of success, they are you know predicting that we animals are just fit to rule. uh you know by ourselves and we cannot be self governed we cannot be governed by humans next mm. thing also i think this is the very starting of where you know the pigs are now starting to be at a superior position because the line just before that it says mm -hmm. that you know the milk they did not know where the milk was going after the cows were milked they did not know where the milk was going and so the line before that says that it was mixed every day into the pigs mash and later on when you see in the mm. paragraph also or maybe in this in the similar page in the same page that they say that even the apples later on they say that you know mm. it is not good for you that is why we are having it and so this is kind of the very starting of now that the you know the pigs are also establishing their superiority over the other animals and now not all animals are equal <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah 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 that is a great this is a great point you made right 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 this is i mean you this is weird that the pigs promised that they would you know uh, lead the animal clan but now mm -hmm. they are the ones that are exploiting their own people and now suddenly they are superior to their own clan 
Yeah, yeah. See, even in the chap in the like the paran below it, it says milk and apples. This is this has been proved by science, comrades. Um, contains substances absolutely necessary for to the well being of a pig. We pigs that brain work as the whole management of the organization of this farm depend on us. So this is you know now this is from here like the any reader will also like get the view that okay. Every animal was equal. Their ideology was good, but now here, now somebody has to be superior in order to to overlook the functioning of the other people. Somebody has to be at a level. So here, you know, by taking more milk and apples, this is how they are kind of establishing their superior superiority, and also saying that okay, the management of the farm is dependent on us. We are working, and so you know, we need that more than you need it. Right, rightly pointed. Yeah, I think this chapter talks about the spread of the word, right? That uh, uh, now the yeah. word was around that uh, there is a farm, uh, the the manor farm is being is completely being ruled by animals, and there is no human interference, and yeah. um, and 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 it, it it's kind of sending a message uh, to animals around that uh, they can be they do not need a human to you know look after them. and it's kind of causing a sense of fear among humans as well right that uh, if if it can happen once okay mm -hmm. then it can happen twice also thrice or maybe spread all around the country also yes. in this chapter a very um, remarkable iconic event happened which is the battle of the cowshed mm -hmm. where this is the first protest or uh, not protest but like war we, we can say of animals against humans where um, mr jones he tries to bring people from the other farm to kind of take over his farm which uh, the other people also help just because you know they don't want that animals in their farm um, you know getting this idea that you know they can govern themselves so they also help out of fear and so all of them come all of the people come like with mr jones they come to regain the control of the farm and then they are just driven away by the animals there and animals realizing their power that okay we are strong they have realized their power in the past also that you know we can drive away humans but now it's like okay now we can form strategies to kind of drive away every human and so this is kind of the first war of animals and humans where the animals win and which is which in this book is called the battle of cowshed battle of cowshed yes also uh, when you when you in this just uh, we have underlined this line at first they pretended to laugh to laugh to scorn the idea of animals managing a farm for themselves the whole thing would be over in a fort in a fortnight they said they put it about that the animals on the manor farm were perpetually fighting among themselves and were also rapidly starving to death when the time passed the animals had evidently not starved to death so again if, if you see um uh, this is how i said this is how you know the writer is trying to narrate that when a new ideology is rising to power okay in in this case it is the four legs good and two legs bad ideology you see that um, initially it is not it is being mocked by other people okay and people don't take it seriously with mm -hmm. and um, they just think that that ideology is too weak to rise to power which is again a red flag because if some rebellion is happening it is a point to notice ki why is this happening and there is always an assumption that uh, the people of that of that clan are like just just i would say stupid to follow that clan and we can also see in this uh, if you in, in in the current day as well if you look at the us politics the uh, the the polarity of both the democrats and republicans are so much that it is it is it can be assumed or it is perceived as the republicans hate the democrats and democrats hate the uh, republicans it's seen that ke jo liberal nahi hai wo gadha hai so again that that rift again you see over here ke acha wo it is always an assumption that a person of opposite ideology is a stupid person because this is what they believe in and it's kind of a mocking point as well for the others yeah yeah now we move to chapter 5 chapter 
let me see here. Mm. All right, I know the majority of the buildings. Okay, so the this chapter starts with uh, mentioning Molly. So Molly is a mayor, I guess, in the book. Mm -hmm. And so uh, somebody uh, from the animal farm, they say that we see that a man from the other farm was petting her and she was letting him pet her, which is against, mm -hmm. you know, kind of the ideology or which is can be looked at against the ide ideology of the animal farm. And so mm -hmm. here she says that, no, no, I wasn't... Uh, like letting anybody pet me and or, or the human wasn't petting me which later on then you know here are some people i mean i think here molly also represents how some people just say that okay we are with you but they're not fully con convinced of the idea or you know they feel like it is better for the older people to you know kind of rule over us or you know, govern us because it is convenient now because we are used mm -hmm. to it and we are not used to self-governance like I was also reading this book of Train to Pakistan by Mr. Kushwan Singh. And there also, uh, there were many instances where, you know, people kind of say that we don't want freedom. Like we have nothing. What will we do of freedom? Like it is the, the book is basically on India and Pakistan a partition. And mm. uh, people, and it basically speaks uh, in some parts, it speaks about how um, people say that Indians, they, we don't want freedom. What will we do of, of freedom? you know it is okay like it we are okay with we're fine with the britishers governing us because that is now because at that point that is convenient and if we are getting food and everything it is like that much is it important for us so here basically so then this chapter kind of goes on into how um now people are doing their work and everything but there is this um uh, pig by the name of snowball he kind of now goes deeper into the idea of okay we can govern ourselves better or we can be more efficient by building windmills and other machinery just clearly we have to now work harder but later on what will happen is it will uh, reduce our work time it will be better for us which napoleon is first against the ideology of but later on when they you know keep a meeting and they discuss napoleon like snowball gets most votes and so what happens is that they finally give into the idea of building a windmill. And uh, yeah, and so then now they are like that. Just a second. Huh? Mm -hmm. Also what happens is um, there are some abandoned dogs on the farm, which apparently Napoleon kind of adopts and uh, trains them. So it, there is a meeting where vote what is voting is happening about the idea of a windmill and whether windmill should be made or not and so uh the all the votes goes to snowball because everybody is for the idea of basically building a windmill and so that um later on they have to work less harder in the future mm. or you know they can uh just eat and the windmill will do all the work it's something like <laughs> that and so the Nap and Napoleon gets no vote, Usme to, and then he kind of gets very disturbed by the fact that, okay, I have got no vote, or maybe, you know, his ego comes in the way, and so he uh, asks the dogs that he's been training for himself to kind of drive Snowball out of the farm, and so Snowball leaves the farm, and later on in this book, uh, Napoleon says that, okay, it was my idea to kind of initially... And Napoleon has always been opposed to the idea of building a windmill. He is like, oh, let, let's not do that. Let's first concentrate on having food and water for everybody. But uh, Snowball was like, let's make a windmill. Otherwise, uh, because that will, now it is a lot of uh, mehnat. But later on, it will be easier for everybody. But later on, when um, Napoleon drives off Snowball of the farm, so he tells everybody that, okay, I was always off the idea of building a windmill. It is because Snowball was not uh, good for the farm is why I first opposed to building the windmill. But now I think we should build the windmill. And then after that, they start working on the windmill and the windmill. Then goes on to how, you know, 
they are just mm-hmm. working 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 and they're not getting enough food because now all of their concentration all of their resources they have just uh, given into building the windmill and less concentration is on you know cutting the grass or cutting the grass. Making, yeah collecting for food. food for mm-hmm. everybody yeah yeah right so basically this is it for this chapter so, Hmm. I guess Molly represents the people who want peace in the in the true sense, yeah. right? As a person, I would or or I would say that in the modern days they they would be called the centrist or uh, apolitical. Those are the kind of people that Molly represents. Yeah. That uh, at the end of the day, the 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 people who are ruling do want the drift between the common crowd because uh, that is how they collect votes, right? and uh, when uh, when people see people and, and when you see people like uh, molly the first and foremost idea that comes to your mind is okay although the molly is saying that i am a centrist that i it's not that but uh, there is some amount of there is some amount of biasness as well okay and they are trying to bring molly to that to their level where molly becomes either completely napoleon or either completely snowball right it's again the right and the left wala division that uh, people want uh, to see mm-hmm. molly again was obviously the molly's i guess i would say the most neutral character in the entire story okay where uh, she is trying to be sensible okay and mm-hmm. at the same time she is respecting the uh, current leaders as well not trying to challenge the leader just for the sake of challenging the leader yeah right? yeah yeah and uh, yeah and uh, uh, yeah many meetings were held in the farm and the pigs occupied themselves with planning out the work of coming season it had come to be accepted that the pigs who were manifestly cleverer than other animals should decide all the questions of the farm policy though their decision had to be ratified by a majority vote this is again something very a classic example of how the people already in par or already in, in the uh, trying to rule are are assumed to be smart right mm-hmm. because it is like their own self proclamation ki if i am ruling you that is definitely i am ruling you because i am definitely smarter than what? you right this is what you see and when it comes to the idea of windmill i think it is uh, the way uh, you know napoleon is trying to distract people right that uh, uh because his main motive of napoleon was to be solely a person in power he wanted nobody around him to you know dictate their terms and uh, for that reason to to execute his own agenda okay we can see that he created a distraction channel which uh, or or gave a distracted purpose i would say to animals ke if we do this okay which is again something imaginary okay then we'll be able to do that right mm-hmm. so rather than focusing on the real prob- problems which snowball was pointing at <laughs> he, uh, napoleon had his own way of you know going about his own uh, achieving his own purpose the animals formed themselves into two factions under the slogan vote for snowball and three week day and vote for napoleon and the full manager see again this mm. so this is uh, obviously you see in this event comes to snowball the snowball ka jo slogan hai uh you see the three day week is something mm-hmm. that would be alarming to uh, animals because they had decided that they didn't want to work or they even if they wanted to work they wanted to have the full benefits mm-hmm. and vote for napoleon and the full manager so here you can see that it is kind of promised that uh, the other animals won't have to work totally okay and uh, obviously people would vote for napoleon because that is more in alignment with what they started mm-hmm. according to napoleon what animals must do was to procure firearms and train themselves in the use of them according to snowball they must send out more and more pigeons and stir up rebellion among the animals on the other farms wow this is the rise of mm-hmm. i mean i don't even know how i don't it's it's obvious that i don't want to point out what they are heading to Mm-hmm. like that and uh, yeah that's that's is that said from the fifth chapter 
is it is there more it was noticed that the wag their tails to him in the same way as the other dogs had been right so again when it comes to the dog all apart where he had adopted the dogs so that dogs were as we move ahead we get to know that the dogs were there for a purpose okay they were wild yeah. dogs they weren't domesticated dogs and he was napoleon was training them for that purpose only to infuse or to create a sense of fear in people i mean in the animals so that they just blindlessly and without questioning obeyed napoleon yeah right and uh, this uh, this is again a, 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 yeah you were saying something no no you go you go ahead yeah again over here we see that it was noticed that they wagged tails so i mean the animals could have noticed it but uh, they were so much in um i would say infatuated by napoleon's charisma that they forgot that uh, what what is happening also i think here it is now they're starting to show you know uh, how napoleon is now starting to represent mr jones the the thing that they were rebelling against the first thing mm. that they were rebelling against now either say now he is starting to turn into the very thing mr jones that they were rebelling against so yeah right they are turning into things that they exactly wished for yeah 